Welcome, it's a great day to be a miner. In today's video, we're talking motherboards, specifically mining motherboards. But before we do, let's go ahead and spin that intro. So today we're going to talk about mining motherboards, specifically the best mining motherboards for different price ranges, what you should be buying, what you should be using right now, depending on your price range. Man, this is the time to accumulate. Mining's getting ready to come back. It's ramping up. You can still get a lot of hardware at really affordable prices, but for how much longer? Let's go ahead and start stacking this stuff while it's smart instead of waiting until the bull run happens and then you're like, oh man, we need hardware. So without further ado, let's start with my absolute favorite motherboard. This one, I just picked up another. This is my third. I made a specific video on this quite a while back. This is the ASRock Q270 Pro BTC Plus. I have two of these running. I've got 24 uh, RTX 3070s running on these two boards, two of these boards, 12 on each board. And man, they are just rock solid. This is a tank of a motherboard. It is a more futuristic, not more futuristic, but it's not as antiquated as some of the other older mining motherboards that still serve a great purpose. And uh, these were selling for $270 US when I made the video quite a while back. Now these things, I picked this one up for around 88 bucks. Um, and uh, they're probably going for about a hundred for most places but I'll make sure to put a link down in the description for all this hardware so what exactly makes this such a great motherboard well let's go ahead and take this open and we're gonna take a look at it then we're gonna talk about some of the features and why it is so great uh, this is kind of in the way right now so let's just go ahead and poof all this out red panda style ready Go. And we're back. Look at that. That never ceases to amaze me. Okay, so check this board out. First off, <sighs> that new motherboard smell. That is brand new. Mm. Picked this one up from Memory C again, and it was under 80, about 88 bucks, I think, total. And that's counting shipping and everything. To door, I believe the price has went up since. It's about just over $100. Um, also probably around $100 on eBay and on Amazon. I'll make sure to put links down in the description. So what makes this motherboard so amazing? This is a 13 GPU motherboard. It's got 12 of the PCIe 1 X1 slots, and then it's got one of the X16 slots um, so that you could actually hook the GPU directly to the board. Uh, hopefully you can get a good look of it there. Yeah, and so what makes this great is it has the dual slots for the DDR4, it's not using the old DDR3, has your 24 pin connector, a whole host of I.O. inputs uh, on the side here. You've got two USB 3s, four of the USB 2 slots, you've got an HDMI directly out because if you're setting up your motherboard, really what you want is your CPU to power your display if you're running a display um, so that you're not taking hash rate away from one of your GPUs. And then of course, it's got all your standard IO, your, uh, your audios and all that fun things. Um, but, but also the, the main thing about this board is its stability. It runs on Intel i6, i7 generation. And then of course you can use the cheaper Celeron CPUs, the G3900s, etc. cetera. Um, but, but it's just, it's a rock solid board. I, I've not had any issues with any of it rebooting, any uh, GPUs disconnecting other than whenever a riser may go bad because it is a PCIe slot and you do have the risers go out here and there. Um, it's, it's just a rock solid, stable board. It's one of those ones that I don't have to maintenance it. I don't have to go and reboot it often. It just works. And now that it's under a hundred bucks or right around a hundred bucks, man, this is no brainer. My absolute favorite motherboard. Now, before we get into the other favorites and the best mining motherboards, let's cut to our new sponsor. Let's go ahead. You know quantum computers. You know blockchain. But do you know both together? Dynex was the first platform to create a neuromorphic supercomputing blockchain-based algorithm which solves real-world problems. And the best part? Anyone can post a job. Whether a company from the Global 2000, a machine learning job, or fintech and pharmaceutical. 
And if you don't want to program it yourself, get an expert directly at the marketplace. Run the job and be impressed by the fast result. And we're back. So the next, let's go ahead and go to its famous predecessor. This is the ASRock H110 Pro BTC Plus motherboard. And this thing was one of the most popular during the last boom because it's again, a 13 GPU motherboard, just like the Q270 Plus. It runs a single 60X16 slot for a full GPU plugin. And then it also has the 12X1 PCIe slots. It has the same host of inputs and outputs. This one doesn't feature an HDMI. It actually uses a DVI-D. Uh, a plug, which I have to use a connect, uh, adapter, pretty simple. You can get an $8 adapter if you wanna run it to an HDMI or to a VGA, whatever your old display, what kind of display you're running. Um, and it's running on a similar generation. You can run the uh, i6, I believe, uh, Intel, the i7 Intels, um, and then your cell or a host of Celerons. It's running off of DDR4. It is a rock solid. I do have one uh, really big complaint about this one, and anyone who's owned one of these knows about this, is that these slots are touching one another. They're right up against one another, and that puts your risers right next to each other. So if your slots start to get a little sloppy, as some of them do as the boards are getting used and risers are being replaced, they could touch each other and could cause a shorting issue. And there's different ways you can get around this. You could wrap a little black tape, electrical tape, around each PCIe connector, or you could even get a, uh, some 3D printed little adapters so that they don't touch. But that actually was my main concern with all these, this type of board. I've never had too much issue with it, but this is a close second for me, and it has been a really good competitor and a great motherboard through the years. Now, you're not gonna be able to find this one um, cheap, new, you can find it probably new for around 150, but you, there are so many of them out there used right now. Make sure to use reliable sellers whenever you're buying used products like this so that you can trust it. And I also always advise to get a look at your CPU pens, your socket, make sure that they send, they post a picture of the socket if there's no CPU included so that you know that none of the pens are twisted or damaged. So that, hey, you're getting a product and when you get it, don't sit on it for a long time like I sometimes do. Test it out, hook it up, make sure it works. It's really simple to test the motherboard. You just set it on the box it comes on, plop it on there, put your power supply, hook it in there, make sure your CPU is slotted, put a, a cheap just cooler on there, your RAM, and then just plug it into a monitor, boot that thing up, make sure that it posts to BIOS and everything looks good and it doesn't hang. That's the important part. So yeah, that's my number two favorite mining motherboard. So that's right there in about the same tier. And then let's move on to a cheaper, more budget oriented option. My favorite budget board of all time. And this is, let's open it up. This one's brand new too, I believe. I uh, picked this one up during the last mining craze. It's a spare. I had a couple of them extra. Now I'm down to one. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really solid board. This would be the BTC 250C. And it's just a little mini looking board, much smaller than your full size ATX board. Like that, there's your full size next to it. And what makes this board so unique is that instead of having PCIe slots to plug your GPUs into, you've got USB 3s. So you basically plug your riser cable, USB plugs directly into here down at the bottom. And it actually looks really neat and tidy when you plug these all in, cause you can do say I, how I chose to do it. I did three, banded them, three, banded them, three, banded them, three, banded them. Or you could just do four, 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 however you want to do it. And you can put nice, nice little runs and get your cables all nicely managed. Um, but what makes this as great is the, the price point. These things cost around 50 bucks. And uh, you can even, if you go on say AliExpress or some other sites like that, you can get it with a CPU, with everything brand new for around 50 bucks. And that's counting your RAM and your CPU. These things are pretty great to just fire up. Now, I do have one caveat. They do have the, uh, I meant to mention, they have the HDMI out, which is great. And four USB outs and your ethernet, obviously. But uh, I've had some stability issues with a couple of these. Um, on my 12 by 6600 XT rig, 
I would have, have to randomly reboot it. And now I thought maybe it was risers. I've changed out all the risers over the years and it still to this day has some stability issues. I had another one on a bunch of 3070s and it would actually have stability issues. So it's great. It's a great budget board, but you have to be careful because you can have a little bit more stability issues compared to going to a premier ASRock uh, mining motherboard or our next competitor, the Asus, but we're gonna get into that one. So yeah, there is the Budget King motherboard. And make sure it's the BTC250C, that because the C has the USB ports on it. The B version actually has got, the, it's almost the same board, but instead of using the USBs, it's using actual PCIe slots. And those are often a point of failure in a mining rig. So that's why I highly advise the BTC 250C. Next is the Asus Prime Z series. When I say Z series, I'm talking Z 370, the 390, the 270, etc. And then there's a lot of different variations. Of course, this box has been tr pretty trash because they put the shipping label directly on it. Um, but this one is actually the Z 370A2 version. And like I said, they have different versions with different PCIe slots in them. Cortana rig over here, which is eight 3070s, that thing is a tank. It just runs and runs. It's running off of this specific board. I've got another rig running off of a prime board and they just work. They work flawless. They are more of a, a board that you would get if you don't want to commit to a straight mining motherboard. And the great thing about going with this kind of a board instead of say a mining motherboard is that when times are down, these prices stay up. These hold their resale because they can be used for gaming or regular PC builds. Whereas a mining motherboard is usually just that, a mining motherboard. Um, the caveat on these are, of course, there's so many different series. There's the, just of the Z370 alone, I believe there's like four variations. So make sure you, you check and get, <laughs> so make sure that you actually research and you get the one that has the extra PCIe slots so that you can run extra GPUs. These things, even if it only has six slots on it or even four slots, I know that the Asus Prime boards, you can easily put the four in one PCIe adapters that are about 15 bucks, slap one of those in there and it almost always directly recognizes those GPUs. So these are very versatile, they are very stable and they hold a good resale. And again, that's why I've personally always used the Asus Prime motherboards and they are just great all around motherboards. Next, let's talk about some honorable mentions. I would be remiss if I did not mention this guy. This is the Gigabyte H110 D3A mining motherboard. This was one of my first and it really lasted. I think I had four of these running at one time. It is an LGA 1151, runs off the cheaper Intel CPUs. Um, it runs off the sixth and seventh Intel. And then of course your Celerons, just like the other boards. This only has actual six slots in it though. Um, the great thing about this board is that again the stability the cost back then it was really cheap even on the first mining well two bull runs back it actually was only costing me about 150 bucks back then and then uh i could easily run an adapter and run eight cards off this thing flawless with no issues and again rock stable board it had a really good bios at the time that you could easily get to all your settings you could turn on mining mode which would put on the above g 4g decoding um, it would fix your display out it was just a great all-around tank of a motherboard these are be harder to find especially in good condition so um, be, per, be careful with what you buy and make sure that it is working and again a reputable seller, seller but so yeah the Gigabyte H110 D3A mining motherboard and finally I have to mention the Asus B250 mining expert motherboard it is a 19 GPU mining motherboard I don't have any more of those on hand I used to have a couple but man that board is an amazing board and it's quite pricey even today they might still run you used for 150 plus um back during the boom you're talking upwards of a thousand dollars on the last bull run but uh yeah i would be remiss if i didn't talk about that it is a great motherboard it's very consistent very solid 
19 GPUs, great PCIe slots, great compatibility. So, so there you have it. Those are all of my favorite motherboards and all the ones that I've used over the years and the tried and true. And uh, yeah, this is by far my favorite. It's the ASRock Q270 Pro BTC Plus. And uh, yeah, it only costs about a hundred bucks right now. Now is the time to buy. And again, make sure to check out the video I made on this guy. And uh, did I miss any? If I missed anything, make sure to put them down in the comments. What are you mining with? Say, hey, Altered, you're a dummy. What about this motherboard? It is a tank. It is the best price to performance. And so, yeah, I think that about does it for today's video. Let's go ahead and cut to that outro.